key things I use in a shooting aspect. Yeah. Um, well, th this will kind of sound like a self plug, but it isn't. I, I came up with a light, I call it a torch light. And what it is, uh, it's kind of the perfect combination of all worlds of lighting. It's a tungsten light, it's a fluorescent light, it's a daylight. We built special caps for it, it's dimmable. I use it for everything. The two essentials besides my camera that I would need uh, would be my tripod. And it's, it doesn't need to be an expensive tripod. I, I use an Adorama tripod. It's a carbon fiber tripod. It's less than $200 with the head. Uh, and my torchlight, those are two ridiculously well needed items I couldn't survive without. My tripod is just, it's almost like a safety crutch for this at this point. And the torchlight just allows me to paint with light. I can really paint my pictures rather than just using an on-camera flash and waiting for things to happen. I don't like directional light, I like soft light. I wanna keep things soft. And the whole purpose of light was for it to be a fill, not a main. So, kind of focus from there. What's the biggest thing that drives you in terms of photography? Could be a lot of things. Um, I guess the biggest thing I would say is, is dreaming. You know, I'm a failed baseball player. I uh, was very fortunate at a young age. I threw a baseball when I was 15, you know, about 95 miles an hour. So I threw the ball really hard. I was scouted by colleges, by major league teams. Uh, I'm very passionate. I'm excited. I feed off people's energy and emotion. My drive is when I look out there and see if I, if I can touch them, if I can really get them, uh, that's my drive. You know, it's exciting. It's, it's more interesting. You know, I'm asked all the time, uh, what do you want your legacy to be? And the obvious legacy I want to leave is my kids, you know, and my family. But the fact is, if you think about it, I've left hundreds, thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people of happy memories of their life by taking their images. I'm recording history, you know, and when people look on their wall, I want them to, to see it come alive again. And I'm lucky enough to do that. It's a pretty great job. That's my drive no doubt about it. My drive is that I create, and it's a story. You need to have a feeling, you need to have emotion. Too many times photographers are robots. They, they're so technically, uh, technically involved with what's going on that they forget that it's about feeling it. You know, you can't always see what's in your mind's eye, but a photograph from your heart can. If you shoot with heart, if you shoot with emotion, you're gonna be a hell of a lot better. It's all a matter of feeling it. You know, when I look at it, I'm not embarrassed to say I still cry at weddings. After 21 years, I still cry. Um, I'm completely okay with it. You know, I, I like feeling it because if I feel it, I can capture it better. So you got to shoot from the heart. Everything's got to be from the heart. My dad always told me when he was training me there, oh, I know bad days in a wedding photographer's life. And that statement cannot be any truer now with all the problems that people are having with the recession, um, the economy, their own personal nature of issues. Uh, you can't have a bad day. Someone waited their whole life for what you do that day. You, you gotta be perfect. You know, there are no mistakes allowed. Be sure to subscribe to our blog now to stay updated on my show. And we'll give you tips and insight to keep advancing your photography. Also check out our guests' website for a closer look at their work. Tune into our next episode of Advancing Your Photography for an inside look at another photographer's world. Until then, this is Mark Silver reminding you to get out and capture your own images of life.